Hello, hello, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam. Another week has gone by in this 2022 and I was really looking forward to making what I think is probably the most important video I've made for this channel. And it is the result of um, uh, feedback and uh, uh, questions that I received from my previous video about uh, what enlightenment really is. And uh, a very concrete question that I received from a, from a friend was, uh, to say, listen, <clears throat> uh, I totally get it. I understand that we are one with everything, but I can't feel it. I, I can't make myself feel it, try as I may, right? I, I feel like this separate entity. So I thought I would um, um, share uh, some, some insights on how that, that shift in perception takes place so that you can start feeling one with everything and therefore in harmony with everything which is not just a story in your head or, or, you know, it's not just about squinting really hard or trying to be really nice, but it's, it's about a true shift in perception that takes place when you, um, when you understand what's going on. So <clears throat> let's take the starting point again of the, um, uh, where everybody begins in the, uh, in the spiritual journey, which is to see yourself as a, um, a separate entity that is made up of uh, a mind, a body, and emotions that kind of uh, join the two. And that separate entity is operating in a world made of things that are uh, pleasant or unpleasant. So this is a sun signifying, you know, nice stuff. And this is a stormy cloud. Now, <clears throat> in, that, um, in that dynamic, you are a, a, a lonely entity surrounded by a, a, a world that is foreign to you, that you need to negotiate with on a constant basis. And, um, you know, what it creates is a certain relationship to that world that is essentially based on um, craving or desire, which means that you want to move towards these things and aversion or fear which means that you want to move away from, uh, from these things, the scary ones, right? Because they, they, they create uh, um, uh, pain, either psychological or, or emotional or bodily pain. So you hold this relationship to the world as a separate entity from that world. <clears throat> now, um, if you begin to... Um, do mindfulness practices and and you begin to uh, exercise your your focus what begins to happen is that you begin to uh, more accurately uh, see uh, everything actually so you you begin to develop the ability to observe all the elements of your perception and you come to realize something very funny which is that as far as perception is concerned, all these things are on the same playing field, meaning that we make a uh, conceptual and, and very handy or very uh, uh, convenient distinction between inside and outside or me and the other. So that's, that's the, the starting point is the, the me, this is the me, and the other, other. And that is a very handy distinction to make <clears throat> when it comes to survival and the rest of that. But, you know, if we want to become one with everything, survival needs to take, take a back seat. So um, when we start transcending this distinction, what starts to happen is that we begin to notice that all of these, whether they are thoughts or emotions, bodily sensations, uh, unpleasant people or circumstances, and uh, pleasant people and circumstances, they all occupy the same, um, they, are, they all live in the same playing field when it comes to being aware of them, right? So if we for a moment um, forget about um, what is internal and external, Say, if I was to take my hand and, and look at it, 
Yeah, so I'm looking at my hand here. And if, if I was to look at the whiteboard, I would realize that both the whiteboard and my hand, as far as visual perception is concerned, are exactly on the same playing field. I'm noticing the whiteboard, I'm noticing my hand. There's no difference between the two of them. The difference between me and the other is added later. Yeah, it's, a, it's an addition and it's a conceptual addition that, um, that is very, uh, very ingrained in us, right? So we, we, you know, we have a name, we have a history, and we start to create all these things that keep creating a, a, a bigger rift between myself and my surroundings, which is a conceptual distinction. It's not a real one. And, <clears throat> but even if you understood this, you would still not easily go around thinking of everything as yourself. So what is it that is creating the, um, the illusion of separateness? Well, what it is, is gaps in your awareness, because you see um, this, this, whole, this whole circle of awareness here that, that can both observe your thoughts or your hand or the whiteboard out there. It's a, it's a circle that is that tends to start by being very incomplete. So it has a lot of gaps in it. There's many things about your thoughts that you don't know because they are unconscious. Many things about your emotions that you don't know because they are unconscious. And especially in modern society, we are very disconnected from our body. So there's many blind spots in our body of which we are unconscious. Yeah. So you have all these gaps going on here. And you also have gaps <clears throat> in what you call in, in perception of what we call the outside world. Because you see, we are so entranced by things that we desire and trying to get them. And we are so hypnotized by running away from things that we fear that there are many other things in the neutral zone, which are neither desired nor feared, that are therefore not perceived. So when you begin your spiritual journey, you begin by being a, um, an awareness or a, your, your, your perception circle is very full of gaps. That's the starting point. Why is that important? <clears throat> it's important because um, what you, your sense of self, your sense of, not your sense of me as in mind, body and emotions, but your sense of uh, your, your, your essential I am, your essential, your essential sense of existence seems to come from an I in the middle, a ghost in the machine, but that's just a mental um, a construct. What it, what it, where it really comes from, your, your, essential, your essential sense of self comes from the sum total of all your, all your perceptions. So the sum total of your perceptions is what gives you your sense of self. If that sum, so, sum total is full of gaps, what it tends to do is it takes, <clears throat> it takes those gaps and those gaps create duality where, where it doesn't really exist. So to give you an example, um, you could say something bad is happening, yeah? and it's making me feel bad. So here's the heart, so you know, is, is this, right? So there's something bad out there happening and it is making me feel bad. So the other has done something bad and it creates an ugly feeling inside of me. But that is an incorrect view. It's a, it's a, it's a fragmented view of what is in fact a single thing because um, the event out there, the reaction in you, and the observation of the two is one thing. It's a, it's a single phenomenon. It cannot be separated other than conceptually because of the fact that you are not observing it correctly. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> so our starting point is, 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 a, is a bubble of perception, which is where we de derive our feeling of self, that is full of holes and therefore creates separation in our perception. And then, of course, it would, logic would then dictate that as your bubble of perception becomes more whole or more healed, then you would start to uh, perceive less separation 
between the different aspects of your perception. And there is a, there is a moment where that starts to flip in which your bubble of perception is, is so complete that you then start to notice that it was always, that reality was always a single block, was an indivisible single thing that you mistook for being me and the other. But that, it, so you can understand it conceptually, which is all good and great, but to feel that you need to work on having a bubble of perception or bubble of awareness that is touching all your perceptions equally, on equal footing, as opposed to preferring some and shying away from others. And, uh, and that goes for both external, apparently external events and apparently internal events. In other words, courage and willingness to look at everything and uh, with, with a lot of focus and a lot of uh, kindness is what starts to create a more complete sense of self, which derives from your bubble of perception. So um, one of the big um, one of the big elements about this is to come and realize that there is no ghost in the machine. There's nothing in the middle. There's no you in the middle, but your sense of self is derived from the sum total of your perceptions. Yeah. And that's what derives that sense of self. And then the thinking mind invents a ghost in the machine, which is a kind of shorthand or placeholder for, for all of this happening at once. Um, now, the um, there is I spoke about a, a moment where, where perception starts to tangibly flip, and that starts to happen the more this bubble of perception becomes becomes complete. How does it become complete? We talked about that in the previous video. It becomes complete by having full perception of your body, which needs to be aware perception of your body, full and aware perception of your emotions, both good and bad full and aware perception of your thoughts, full and aware perception of things that you consider pleasant, unpleasant, and full and aware perception of things that are neutral. In other words, things that would not have uh, pulled you out through fear or desire, but which are simply there. Right? They, 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 that's where the richness of life comes in from, from things that are you know, not creating a lot of uh, desire or fear in yourself. So as you start to fully become aware of all the elements in your bubble of perception, that's when the identity flicks away from the me that you thought you were. So this one over here, and you come to realize that what you always have been is the bubble of perception, the complete bubble of perception. And that bubble of perception makes no distinction between internal things and external things. It makes no distinction between me and the other. In that bubble of perception, all perceptions live on the unequal footing. That doesn't mean that you need to like everything. Um, I made that mistake in the past. You know, you need to be a nice person who, who doesn't like or dislike or fear or desire anything. Good luck with that. It's not going to happen. It simply means that you are willing to fully perceive everything and that you actively work, if this is your goal, to, uh, to make your perception richer on every aspect of your life so that, um, so, that your ide so that your sense of self makes a shift away from a partial sense of self into a complete sense of self, which includes that which appear to be external to you. And so this is what we call the I am. I am. Yeah. Um, so we talked about <clears throat> having courage, for example, to observe things that are unpleasant. But another trick that is also very handy when it comes to creating this new identity or new sense of identity is to um, understand that that which appears to be an external unpleasant event, uh, which creates an apparently internal unpleasant feeling are one and the same thing. And therefore you do yourself a favor by observing both poles or bo both prongs of the situation at the same time. When you observe them at the same time, the rift between them is eliminated and you begin and you begin to see that they are both on equal footing and, and they are both one thing, which is um, the edge of your awareness, which incorrectly seen 
or 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 or, or um, suppressed separates itself into duality, but uh, when permeated with focus of awareness, becomes once again a single thing. Yeah. So there is no me or other or external and internal. So observing both event and internal reaction allows you to go back to the imaginary I in the middle and, and therefore completes the circle yet again. Um, there is a practice that, uh, well, let, let me take a step back. You can wait for life to bring unpleasant things to show you the gaps in your awareness. And it will, right? Life throws stuff at you all the time. And that will help you start completing the, the, the I amness if you, if you do this correctly. If you are willing to observe unpleasant things and also desires fully. Um, but life could take a very long time to do that, especially if everything is going fine. So if you're interested in making more progress and, and experimenting that shift of awareness in which you become the whole world, you can sit and meditate. <clears throat> and when you meditate, even if nobody is poking you from the outside and no nasty event is happening, the gaps will start to uh, come to the surface in the form of unpleasant thoughts and, and, and emotions and distracting things. And you can then look at them fully. And by looking at them fully, you, you, uh, you work on integrating them and completing the circle for yourself. Um, this answers, at least to me, why awareness and focus are such powerful tools. It is because rather than trying to psychologize why something should not be desired or use psychology to work out why something should not be avoided, you simply observe it. And by observing it, you, you bring your sense of self to a level in which whether something is pleasant or unpleasant, it is recognized as part of yourself. Uh, the word recognize is a very important one because in principle, this circle of the real self is always complete. In other words, you are always one with everything. But because of partial view, because of the partiality of your view and the, all the gaps in your perception, um, that separation is created and you need to start looking at everything so carefully uh, that you recognize it as part of the self, right? So it's an act of recognition. Uh, it is not a, a, about adding anything or telling yourself a story. It is to say that once things are fully permeated by your attention, they are recognized as nothing other than yourself. And therefore, your attention and your awareness placed on anything integrates it into the circle of your sense of self. And that's how you start to see everything as yourself. That's how you feel one with everything. Not as a story, not as a, um, you know, sort of fortune cookie level wisdom of like, yeah, man, we're one with everything, you know, but you're just saying that you can't really feel it. The, the, the question is, as I grab this, this eraser, do I see it as something foreign and other than me? Or is it, is it imbued with a sense of self? Is it myself? And that's a very tangible shift. It either is, it's there or it isn't, right? There's, there's no, um, well, of course, there's, there's, a, there's a period in between where your perception goes back and forth between me and I. But, uh, but there's a very distinct process that is happening <clears throat> when you start to do this. Um, there are teachers that advocate always staying in the sense I am. And what they mean by that is try to, try to perceive this full bubble all the time. And the way you do that is try to sense your I amness all the time, which is derived from nothing other than this, right? So in other words, look for the center so much and so often that you are constantly being the, the I am in this, in this periphery of, of awareness. Uh, I've been doing that for, uh, I would say, a year and a half or thereabouts, as much as I can. And I can, I can attest to the fact that your sense of identity shifts away from the me into the, um, into the I. Now, there's one um, additional step to this, if we do a with, with all this stuff. And I want to share that not because I've gotten there, but because my spiel about enlightenment last time was not 100% complete. See, shifting from me to I is one step, which is significant. Um, 
So you've gone from thinking that you are uh, this, right? Your, bo your body, which is one element of what you are, which is this. So you shift away from me and you shift towards I, yeah? Now, the shift from here to here happened by fully observing the body, the mind, and all these kind of things. And that allowed you to go meta on yourself. You transcended yourself. And so now you are here. So now you are the I. But that's not, alas, where the story ends. <clears throat> because if this circle becomes very, very, very com complete, the I, or the self, can also be transcended. And so once this becomes fully permeated, that's when the no self, no self, would become available to you. Uh, now you can try to make that, you can try to make any of these jumps without doing the work, uh, but the odds are badly stacked against you um, because it is, very, it is very difficult to transcend anything that you haven't fully permeated and accepted. It is, it is at the point where something is completely uh, uh, perceived that the observer or, or, or you know, whatever it is can, can pull itself out from it, right? And, and, and to do that before is a, is a very challenging thing to do. Some people can do it. To some people, the jump happens all the way from here to here, uh, in which case some of them have had psychotic breaks and stuff like that, because to go from me to the no self and feel yourself, you know, to be the nothing, uh, it's, uh, you know, my, it's to be a, too big a jump for the psyche. So it's better if it, if it takes place as a um, as a step by step process. Um, but this this is the process, and and this one here, you have influence over. So so sadhana or uh, uh, meditation and spiritual practice happens on this level. So far, so long as you're on this level, you are still egoic because you have a sense of identity. It might not be separate from the world, but it is. There is an I amness. There is an identity still there. To go to the no self where there is no identity and that, that's really when the ego disappears is the final part but this part is not done because doing only happens on the level of identity and and somewhat egoic uh, activity and the non-doing or the no self is um it happens on its own so there's there's nothing there to do or there's nothing there that can be done uh on this level while, while you're here and then as you jump to here um uh, Plenty of work to be done if, you, if you're interested in this, in this kind of process and if you, if you want to you know, start experiencing in a, in, in a, in a very real sense what that, what that progression feels like. And uh, you know, well, it's a very cool process. It uh, makes you harmonious with, with everything because you feel yourself to be everything. Right? So a moment, the more you do that, the more everything is recogni recognized as nothing other than the self. So I hope that uh, clarifies things uh, a little bit further and I'll be back with more videos. Cheerio.